So if you think these companies don't have sick agendas for our kids, I'm going to play you the Balenciaga's latest uh, scandals. Uh, luxury fashion house Balenciaga has apologized for featuring children cuddling teddy bears dressed in bondage gear in its latest advertising campaign. Yes, they had young kids with teddy bear bags dressed in what looked like BDSM-inspired outfits. Uh, one child is pictured with an assortment of empty wine glasses. And if you have any doubt on what they were trying to tell folks with this ad, then ask yourself why the ad also featured court documents that mentioned virtual child porn. Now... If you haven't seen some of these pictures, here's one with the teddy bear and the BDSM gear with the wine glasses spread around. Then you got another one with the has a lock on the teddy bear's neck and all this BDSM stuff spread around. You have the documents in question that they were talking about. Another picture of a young girl, multiple teddy bears. She's lying down on the couch. Then you have this one with the young boy. It's a picture of the devil, of a child's drawing of a devil up in the corner. A picture of a, a black hoodie which, you know, all the Illuminati type of hoodie stuff. They say the shoes have looked like the devil, but I don't, I don't know about that. That same teddy bear in the corner. And then the misspelling of Balenciaga with two L's, which is referring to Baal, which is reportedly an ancient fertility god worshipped in many ancient Middle Eastern communities, including the Canaanites, who were infamous for sacrificing children. They also mentioned that the, the rug the child was standing on looks like a Ouija board. Now, Balenciaga has apologized. But what I find more interesting is that they are suing the production company that designed the set, uh, North Six Incorporated, and the set designer, Nicholas Desjardins. Now, I don't know Nicholas Desjardins, but man, uh, I think he needs to be investigated, okay? At the least questioned about why he thought this was a good idea. But the nerve of Balenciaga, okay, to sue the production company for $25 million, what are they suing for? They are suing because of the paperwork about a Supreme Court ruling on child pornography that was identified in one of the images. Now, the lawsuit has since been dropped because, as you know, something like this, a photo shoot that's meticulously set up like this, it's no mistake that it, that this happened. And Balenciaga oversaw everything step by step along with the company that they were in, in cahoots with in producing this stuff. You know what I'm saying? They tried to blame, I uh, think, the photographer as well. And this is what the photographer had to say. Following the hundreds of hate mails and messages I received as a result of the photos I took for the Balenciaga campaign, I feel compelled to make this statement. I am not in a position to comment Balenciaga's choices, but I must stress that I was not entitled in whatsoever manner to neither choose the products nor models nor the combination of the same. As a photographer, I was only and solely requested to lit the given scene and take the shots according to my signature style. As usual for a commercial shooting, the direction of the campaign and the choice of the objects displayed are not in the hands of the photographer. So they tried to throw a photographer under the bus for this too. And it's not it's not something that was in their power to, to make a choice about. It's like, here, this is what we're shooting. These are the models that are shooting. These are the kids. Shoot it. So it baffles me that Billy and Siaga would try to throw this off on somebody. But they, they do this often. I'm I'm sick of I'm sick of these companies setting up stuff like this meticulously, purposely doing stuff like this, and then as soon as somebody knows, oh we sorry, we didn't mean to do it. We we didn't mean to. Like they 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 blanked, they they stripped their whole Instagram page of every post, and now it's only apology. I'm not even gonna read the apology because I'm sick of you goofies trying to, you know, apologize for this stuff. The 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 guy who is this? Uh, Demna, the creative director of Balenciaga, also addressed the controversial campaign and gave a lengthy apology. I mean, I'll put it up so y'all can read it if you want to. But while I'm talking, but I like, come on, man. What what are you what are you apologizing for? You're not sorry. You're, you you and, and then I don't even believe you're sorry you got caught because it's more publicity. Even after you get caught, it's just like okay, now that it's caught. I mean, how easy was it for me to find these pictures? So it's still out there. Even though you took it off your Instagram, it's still all over the internet. People are still viewing it and talking about it. The kids were still influenced by this heavily, by being a part of the shoot. You know what I'm saying? Whoever already saw it before the outrage happened is already influenced by it or thinking that it was good. You know, they liked the pictures or they didn't or whatever. But regardless, people are still talking about it. I mean, countless times these companies do this type of stuff. They're, you know, they put out racist 
propaganda, the shirts with the monkey, this on it and that. And, and they put out these, you know, uh, caricatures of black folk with the big lips and all this stuff. And then, uh, you know, five minutes later, oh, my bad, we apologize. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I don't know how this made it out of our marketing team. I know how it made it past your marketing team because your marketing team planned it. They planned those racist caricatures with the big lips and making black folk look goofy. They planned that to put it out there to agitate folks, to get people talking. And then five minutes later, you issue an apology and then it's over with. But they still trolled you. They still they still was able to put that out in your face, dangle it right in front of you. And then as black folk, we still go right back and buy the stuff. Right. And now they're trolling us with our kids. They put this right in your face, dangle it in front of you, issue a weak apology, and then they back. We, we, we count down to the next time that they do another ad like this. You know what I'm saying? And don't even let me bring into the uh, question the alphabet community and the stuff that they be doing to influence kids these days. Kids walking around in full drag. Ten-year-old boys walking around in full drag, getting money thrown at them like they're strippers. <laughs> and it's supposed to be in the name of liberation or, you know, I, I, like, it, it just, I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying it. I'm not with it. But they they do it and they put it in your face and they get away with it every day. And no matter how much uh, outrage is, is talked about about it, for, like, people still going out buying these clothes. People still going out buying these clothes. And when they, when they disrespected black folk, you couldn't. You couldn't, you still couldn't keep the wealthy black folk out of the stores from buying this stuff to make any type of stand against it or or to, you know, unify against the disrespect. You know what I'm saying? And all I'm saying, this is our this is our children. This ain't just black children, white children, this, that. And I'm just saying, this is children. So you you would think we would as a human race would be able to take a stand for our children and be like, why are you trying to push this agenda on our kids? These, these are toddlers, three, four years old, and you, you introducing them to bondage and sexual fetishes. Like, come on, man. We, we should really be ashamed of ourselves for, for standing for this type of stuff and not punishing these companies for the blatant disrespect that they that they just carry out whenever they feel like it. Blatant disrespect. None of them are, are stripped of anything. It's just always like a little slap on the wrist, a little quick apology. There's no fine sanction. There's no Kyrie <laughs> action to be held where they got to donate this, that, and the other and meet with every program in the world and all this stuff, right? right? Before they can start selling clothes again. But it, I'm just saying, man. It's a whole lot of lopsidedness to how things work in the business world, but they're going to keep slapping you in the face and disrespecting as long as we keep falling for it. But this is your boy P. Camp. You tell me what you think, what you don't think. Get at your boy.